call the uh, hearing to order here. Uh, the first here, first uh, meeting, 715, um, 13 Middle Street, request for a variance from the provisions of 3.1 of the zoning bylaw. Uh, it's agricultural residential lot, assessor map 5C, lot 8, Kipple Realty for Barbara Balaji. Um, applicant seeks formal recognition that three dwelling units exist on the property. No changes are proposed to structures or the floor plan. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, good to see you again. Uh, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst here on behalf of the property owner. Um, and I think just as the chair noted, it's a pretty simple request, uh, just really looking to formalize. There, there are three units, uh, three separate tenants inside the building. Nothing is proposed to change for a floor plan. Um, or the exterior, I think they're going to add an egress door. I think one of the units needs an egress door, uh, but but that's it. Otherwise, if you've been buying it, it's a big old farmhouse, I think, from the 1800s. Um, and so we think it's um, it's good to provide, you know, like I said, there's already three tenants in there. They've been in there for pick a number of years, you know, I think back to at least the 70s, and uh, not the same tenants, though, to be clear, but the units have been occupied and they've written three units since that time. Um, you know, with outside, without any outdoor expansion, it, it's good for infill development. And I think just going uh, to the three units really just to formalize it uh, makes a lot of sense in this circumstance. So, you know, if, if the board were to find, you think we can, you can make the finding without derogating from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. Um, if you were not to grant it, then the, the applicant would have to go through significant ex expense in removing a unit, and that's um, really what we're talking about with no outdoor changes and good for infill. Um, so I'm happy to answer questions, but it's, it's one of those kind of formalization things. Do you guys have any questions? Is this under new ownership? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. No, so this is for the prospective owner or the current owner? I think it's a little bit of both. So the, I'm, the, I'm the current owner of Barbara Blanche. My so brother David and I own that house. And I'd like it to pass this year because of financial reasons for myself and for health reasons. I have to move closer to my family, which are in the Boston area and Beverly, and I'll show them the Massachusetts. So. so it's under contract to be sold, and, and if this passes, then prior to the end of the year, I think the transfer will happen. But, but it's something, you know, if the variance is granted, it's something that will stick with the property. So that's why I said it's for the current <clears throat> how long? How long have you been on the property? Me? Yeah. Um, we bought the properties back in 1992 or 1993 because my mother passed away in 1992. And my brother was diagnosed with polycystic kidney disease. And I'm on dialysis. So we bought that property. 93. 93, okay. 93, yeah. And there was three units there when you bought it? Yes, it was. And you know what I think? I think that unit in the back is a little small unit. It's The house is from like 1812 or 1818? 1800s. 1800s, yes. I think it might have been um, either a, like a tavern or um, it might have been even in a slave's quarters. I don't know why that <laughs> unit is back there, but I mean, we certainly didn't do anything. And, this goes back to what, 1972? It goes back to 1972, yeah, your ownership is 19, looks like. So it was a Mad Grass estate that yep. we bought. We yep. bought five houses, um, 23 North Lane, and then the corner house, whatever. The middle, nine. those Middle Street properties. So yeah. Middle Street. Yeah. 10, 11, 13, I think. And the one that Jackie owns, not too, yeah. When you talk about the third, the back unit, you're talking about the third unit that you're saying has existed yes. all along? Since we bought it, yes, in 1993. Yeah, the rear unit is, is like a one bedroom, one bathroom. One bedroom, one bathroom. And then the front ones are two bedroom, two two bedroom, one bathroom. Those are the two front ones. There's a front and there's a middle. Right. So there's a front apartment and a middle apartment and a bathroom apartment. Is that is the house the house is currently listed as a two a two family? Right. I was we bought it as a multi uh, just a multi family. We bought it through town country town. I uh, can't talk with this hour. Town and country through um, Jackie Sus, who was working there at the time. So I think she was a real estate. Yeah, she was a real estate agent. But you're not, you don't need a special permit for the two family. It's already a two family. 
And that's why we need the variance for the, to go to a three family. Or to formalize the three family. <clears throat> Um, what, there's a, I think, that, so I don't know, it's kind of a little bit outside of our purview, but um, there's some amount of time, I think it might be 10 years, but that they can't look, that they can't even look back on something like this? Yeah, and, and so that's, I think, 40A Section 7 provides some grandfathering protection if, if, um, structures have existed for a certain period of time. I don't know that it extends to use of the structures. So like, let's say you were to go and build a house in the woods and nobody knew about it, but you could prove it's been there for 10 years, the building commissioner can't come and say, take that down. Yeah. So it's like one of those things. So I don't, I don't think this falls into this, into that category. So that's why we talked to Dee Dee and, and Tom Quinlan and this was the path that they had suggested. Um, I, you know, I, th I think we, uh, can consider giving the variance. Um, I don't know, so the variance um, would have to be contingent on, I don't know what the, if any rules change when you go from two family to a three family. So it'll be contingent on the building code take things there for town, that's the for town to figure out the building department. But, um, you know, I think we're just being asked to recognize whether we can re recognize the existence of it and it's a variance because there, it's currently only a two family and there's no mechanism for registering as a three family. I don't understand how, excuse me, can I just interrupt you for a moment? I don't understand how we could buy it as a multi-unit for three units and it when it was considered a two family now. I know there's only a change all the time, but so what we're trying to do is to formalize it as that three family because yeah. really one of the issues would be if he bought it as a three family and then oh, okay. you then the building commissioner comes and says get one of these tenants out of here no, and, and the issue would be that you'd have to try to evict a, a tenant who says well I have a lawful lease to this property so that's They're we're just tenant at but we're just trying to formalize it as three okay. units okay. Yeah, so it's not an issue of it changing. Um, it's an issue. So somebody somebody should have caught it somewhere along the line, especially when the property is changing hands. Usually, like, like is, is right now, it's coming up. Uh, so it, it fell through the cracks. You know, sometime in the seventies, it sounds like. Um, and uh, you know, I, I certainly think it would be a hardship to to try to enforce it on the current owner who has done nothing wrong. Um, you know, we see this thing kind of often with these with old houses, especially houses that have stayed in Chambers for a long time. Um, I, don't, I don't have any issue with it. Like I said, I just think we should note that the variance will be contingent on, on anything that Tommy says, um, which might be an issue for the next the next owner. But uh, in order, to, there might be different things with running a three family and running a two family. That's all. You know, I just note that. The variance can't be conditioned on um, owner ownership. So. Oh no, it's not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just, just saying that the owner may need to realize yeah. when he's dealing. The zoning code is different than building. Yeah. So we can we can Tom recognize that there's three units there, but if if I'm, I'm not saying this is the case, but if Tom says you need to put an egress in the back or a fire escape or whatever, yeah. sprinkler, yeah. or sprinkler, yeah. whatever, I don't know, I don't know what you can. Uh, that's not before us. I'm just you know, noting that that if there's any other requirements in uh, from, I'm I'm thinking in particular about the building department, but if there's any for other other uh, departments, we're not speaking to that. We're just speaking to the to the variance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hardship. Well, it's going to be a hardship for me because it doesn't pass this year. Next year, I'm going to have to pay double on capital gains, to be honest with you. And that's going to hurt me because I want to move close to the family because I'm not failing well. I had back surgery last year, and I don't well, okay, go into that. But let's just say it affected something on my body, so it's still working at it. My doctors are at the Mass General now, so they have to move close to the family. I'm trying to do it I think also we can note that I think it's uh, there's other multifamily homes in that area. It's not it's not like out of step with the other uses that are that are taking place in that area. Right. Um, and we purchased it as a We haven't heard from any neighbors. I, I, I say we didn't hear from any neighbors. No. Okay. Um, Mr. Quinlan, 
Any other questions? I'll make a motion. Yeah, um, I make a motion to grant a variance from provision of 3.1 of the zoning bylaw, assessors map 5C, uh, lot 8, um, for Barbara Palangi, um, for formal recognition that three dwelling units exist on the current property. No changes are proposed to the structure. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good seeing everyone in person. Thank you so much. You don't know how much this means to me. Well, good luck with everything. Good to see you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm sure it Street request for a variance, uh, commercial redevelopment of section 5.1.7 and uh, 29 of the Happy Zone Bylaws Business Zone Assessor's Map uh, 04C Parcel 0023 by Triangle Properties LLC. Applicant proposes redevelopment from gas station to coffee shop, pre existing non conforming lot. Structure will fit in the original footprint of uh, variances needed for an external stair and deck. Thank you. Um, the director, Jeff Squire, the Berkshire Design Group, here on behalf of Triangle Properties LLC. Um, so everybody um, is familiar with the property, obviously. Um, this is the one at the corner of Bay Road and, and Russell Street. Um, for the record, as you noted, it was it's parcel four C twenty three. Um, Thirteen Russell Street is the address. Um, former Getty, the service station, the, the the desk um, and office space was in this one-story structure here. There's a larger canopy 
that still remains on parcel right now um, that sits further up um, to the west. You can see the way the property line sits. It's kind of goofy that it, it jogs in off of Bay Road um, several feet. Um, so it, it, it decreases the lot size. So the two non-conformities that currently exist are, um, the lot is currently just over 12,000 square feet. There's a 30,000 square foot um, minimum in this district. That lot, size, lot size is not changing. Um, the other, um, other change or request is so the proposal is to redevelop the site into a into a uh, drive-through coffee shop. Um, there isn't a whole lot of you know, nothing we can do with that building. It's about 700 square feet. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it's about 500 square feet. Um, so one of the um, one of the things that they're looking to do is add a second story storage space above that first floor. And in order to get there, they need an exterior staircase that. Uh, or stairway that provides access to that second floor because there's even room on the interior. And so the setbacks on the site, um, as they sit now, <laughs> so referring to the building department, it's a 50 foot front setback because it's considered a corner lot. There's a 40 foot setback in the back that leaves two tenths of a square foot of buildable area, you know, right, right there. This is where the building sits. This, the goal is to put the stairway here. I did mention the deck, it, it does conform with the um, rear setback and it is no more non-conforming than the existing front setback along this edge, if you will. The, the one encroachment is that, is that stairwell, is that staircase, which is needed for egress to that second floor. Um, in which direction would people be going down that staircase, going up and down? Uh, it, is, it is just for... Um, it's just for employees. It's it's. Well, where is it? Where would people be exiting? Oh, um, they're exiting here. So they're they're going to be exiting in front of traffic. They well, there's a landing at the base of the stairs, and they, there's there's a clear, you know, there's there's a clear line of sight as they come down the stairs, you know, around it's around this corner. It's yes. not like it's not going to it's not going to be hidden. They're they're out here a little. They're out here further, where they come down. The staircase is used just for employees. Just for employees, right. Just storage. Yeah. Okay. If they are going to be coming down they, here. They down, come down, and But in front of the cars coming through. Uh, there, there's cars driving through here, yes. Yeah, but again, there's landing. They can see, you know, it's not like they're walking out of into a blind, you know, blind corner with, with a high volume of traffic. This is, they're going to be restocking, you know, during off hours or, you know, in the business. They're not going around, around to the back. They're going around to the is the, is the deck for is the deck for customers? The deck is for customers. Yes. Yes. And so we've still got to go. So procedurally, we've got a permit into we've got a notice of intent in the conservation commission because it's all in floodplain. None of that is changing. We're actually creating some rain gardens and additional storage. It's not your business. We do have a uh, permit um, application in front of the planning board. And we were close to being finished until all of this suddenness popped up and for whatever reason it never it never <laughs> crossed anybody's mind that it was a pre-existing non-conforming site, but of course it is. Hmm. Um, so the deck, the deck, the deck reaches. The deck is actually conforming. I don't. I actually don't know if you need a variance for the deck. Like, I mean, the only the reason it's not is because they, the building inspector said that this is the front setback. That there's a 50 foot front setback along both property lines there. Okay. So it meets the, the So it meets the rear, the but it doesn't. It the doesn't meet the front. The <laughs> and that's the deck. Only. And that's just the deck, right? Yep. And what they're, you know, obviously they're just trying to squeak anything they can out of this just to make it a viable piece of property because it's not going to. So right. certainly, uh, <laughs> one of the variance categories we can take into account is odd shapes mm -hmm. and topography. Of <laughs> it's a pretty odd shape piece of property there. Yeah. Um, and the canopy is coming down just for, you know. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, it's going to make the site, isn't it? Yeah. Just um, for some reason, I, I don't know why, but I thought that the stairway was going to be part of the deck structure, that the deck was going to be upper level and the stairway below it. That's not the case. No. The, let's see, do I have a... So we have two. 
two pieces being added to that. Mm -hmm. So this may give you a better idea. So these are architectural elevations that were submitted to the planning board. But this is so this is the what east or west elevation. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of drive through, and this is the staircase off to the side that so would provide is, access to the second floor. And so it comes down right. Is there any kind of barrier there for? I mean, I'm, there's a curb. It just seems well. I'm concerned about people stopping in front of cars, but. Mm -hmm. But there's a sidewalk for the there's, there's a sidewalk, and obviously, I mean, it's I don't I don't know if there will be more than one employee. Oh, yeah. To be honest, there may be two, but you know, as, as folks are coming through, um, certainly there's got to be. Is there a sidewalk here? There's there's a sidewalk across the deck. I mean, on the stairs to the back, you can see it on this here. Yeah, you can see the hatch. This is all hatch. Pedestrian neck to a yeah. That's the sidewalk. The that's that's all the hatch. Oh, right. 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 Yeah. Right. So we don't anticipate that that's going to get a lot of use, really. I mean, this is a drive-through, so but we need to provide something. But to your concern, that is that is a pedestrian hatch crossing. Mm -hmm. It will be striped. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And I know, you know, I don't know what the exact signage will be, but there will definitely be some signage at the, on the building face that, you know, is a warning. Yeah, because just to have people bumping right down the right. street, that would be very unsafe. Right. This this pink line here is the that's the fifty foot setback. Th this is this is the rear setback. Oh, rear. This is, this is the fifty foot from Russell Street. This is the fifty foot from the Bay River. <laughs> so there's there's yeah, two, two, tenths tenths of square, two tenths of a square foot. <coughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I'm happy to see that the two entrance be if it's an exit bar on Bay Road. Bay Road are being blocked off. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there restrooms in this building? Uh, no, only for only for staff. And the deck is there. So it meets the back, this, this, not the front. This is, this is Route 9 here? This no, is Route 9 right. here. This is the road. Right. Yeah. So you'll have no, no curb cut off of Route 9? No. No. But the, the, two, the two issues, um, the, the biggest issues is our, our, our circulation. Mm -hmm. Is that you couldn't, <laughs> there was no way to get cars in and around to get the stacking that seemed to satisfy playing board and, and you know, and, right well. on Kirk, I mean, and, and, and you know, understandably it's mm -hmm. you know that people. Yeah. Um so we'll so the, is the deck uh, I mean the stairwell. Mm -hmm. so how, do you, how do you access the deck? So then this is all at grade. Uh, this you know this uh, comes up and there's a there's a path in the back. So it isn't the patched, that's why I wondered where right. it this this yeah this is a little path section. This is this one. So the deck is for the use of customers. It could be staff as well, but you know, it would just some way to offer some well, kind of six parking spaces. There, right? mm -hmm. so, and actually, yeah. these two are are intended to be employees. Yeah. So yeah. That's a drive through a coffee shop, so it's like you can't go inside to get a coffee. And we don't have to deal with the coffee shop part of it. We just have to deal with the structure. You must part. be able to go inside. Uh, I think it's just drive through all counter space. Yeah, there's, there's no restrooms for customers. Yep. They can park there. To go to the deck. They have, well, it's not, we don't have to worry about food. Yeah. But if they have the deck, they will serve any kind of food with the coffee. It'll be take out, it'll, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's no kitchen there. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll just be grab and go kind of stuff. <laughs> yep. right, well, we only have to worry about the stereo. And that right, these two are the right. Yeah. So what's what's what is the setback on the on the stairwell? Um, is that's a very good question. I should have answered you right off the top of my head. Um, is that the scale? Say it's twenty feet. Yeah, mm. I say it's about twenty feet. And it needs to be fifty because that's the. It needs to be fifty. Right. But it's kind of funky because it's a corner lot, so he has two front setbacks because of the way it's a corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's it's really more almost like a side lot setback, which is 15, right? Yeah. 15, yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks 
far enough back. I know, that's what I was trying to know. But I, I think he's saying where all those things intersect is the only place you can build. Right, it's mm -hmm. only about 15, 14 feet, the corner. Um, it's well, it's just because this there's a 50 foot, you know, 50 foot setback from the Bay Road property line. That's the other issue is that you know, the, this property line starts in about you know, 15, right. 15 feet from what the other that's property lines are. That's just from the right away. I think it was when that, yeah, when this all got all mm -hmm. happened. I'm not sure what was the so the lot's a little bit smaller to begin with, and then, yes, yeah, so all right, so it's. So it's 14 feet on the setback from Bay Road. Bay Road, right. And then how? And then and Russell Street doesn't change. I believe that's 30. What is that? 32. Yeah. And then how the, the deck? How far is the deck set? The deck is set, and the back is 41 feet. Yeah. But, but, but the deck is also too close to. Um, yeah. it's as much as the existing building. I mean, the closest the deck is. So the deck is fine in the back, but it's too close to Bay Road. It's too close to Bay Road, right? Mm -hmm. It's no more non-conforming than the existing. Plus, you're framing the deck to be parallel with the with the structure, right? With the building and the offset property line there too. So you're not encroaching. You right, know, it's it's it gets further away right. as, as you go west. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of things to do. Oh, this is crazy best. lot. <laughs> Yeah, we better test it. Oh, so, how, how far is this from, from the property line to the deck? Uh, from the property line to the deck is, say, 20, 23 feet. It's closest. Now, is that the, um, the back? The 21 feet is here. That's the side. The back is 20 is 41 feet. I mean, I think, On side. <clears throat> it's largely, I mean, I think this is like largely planning board issue. Yeah. Like how they're going to fit this business on there. Um, but in terms of like what the business is, like I think a uh, employee staircase in that location is a. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. And then, like you said, the uh, the deck in the back is, is a, I don't know. I think it's close call whether this could be a fine thing, but he asked for a variance, and uh, you know, we're here, might as well do a variance. But the, the deck in the back is not, not even really any more detrimental, right? But um, I guess we're technically both too close to the road, so uh, that's why we're making a variance. Um, I just, I don't see, I mean, it's, an, it's such an odd shape of uh, such an odd-shaped plot, and um, it looks like you've done as much with the topography as you possibly can. Yeah, yeah. We are living it obviously in the back there because that everything, everything behind the building is a lower elevation, which is in floodplain. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything with that down there. So, so, yeah. So we got shape, probably topography, and uh, soil conditions, which right. are all variants. Uh, Mentioned hardship if you try to change it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to do much, yeah. So um yeah. I don't I don't have a problem. I think they're pretty tight in there. Yeah. Not much they can do. It's gonna be nicer than that the funky gas station. Right. Certainly not more than that. Yeah. Okay, I know that we uh, grant the request for variance, Section 10 of Commercial Development, in accordance with 5.17 and 29 of Happy Zone Bylaw. Um, the applicant proposes redevelopment from gas station to coffee shop, and variance is granted for the external stair and deck. So that's 14 feet for the stairs and 23 feet from the, from the deck. Yep. From Bay Road. All those in favor? I I second. Oh, he seconded. Yeah, I seconded it. 
you and I have on that? Hi, yes. Yeah. Sorry. All right, parents granted. Great. Good Thank luck, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Hopefully they follow through and, and the site looks a lot better. I guess, the other, I guess the other permits are first in order. Right. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this is the first stop, so that's okay. It's at 45. We had some thank you. Thank you. We had some other uh, general business um, review and approval of the previous minutes. Has everyone had a chance to uh, review the minutes? Yes, from Linda. Any, any questions on those? I do have one correction to the board meeting minutes. It says at the bottom of the minutes, period closed, and it wasn't a hearing, it was a meeting. Okay. So it should say meeting closed. Yeah. That's the only correction I have. Uh, so, can, do we have a uh, motion to accept the minutes from the September 28th hearing? I move. Second? Second. All those in favor? All right. Minutes are accepted. <laughs> All right. Then we have um, a couple things. Uh, let, I'm going to take them a little bit out of order. Um, we we do have a request for an extension of time for the Most Holy Redeemer variance that we granted. Um, we got a letter from the Most Holy Redeemer Building Committee, and um, basically we had granted. We granted a variance to Most Holy Redeemer for the construction of that clock tower. I don't know if you guys remember that. It's going to be on that. Um, there's a little like rotary kind of in front of the church. There. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. right. in, yeah. in the middle of the rotary. And so they wanted to put it there, and that's a is a setback variance, I believe. It's too close to the road, but there's no uh, you know, sight lines impacted because it's going to be like on a like a tripod. Did we grant that? We did grant that. We did, yes. And uh, there's been a holdup in getting the, the funding and the, all the paperwork in, with the um, diocese. So they have not started construction yet, and they're asking for a, an extension. Let me just see if I can get the letter. The most they can get is six months. Yeah. So and that would take them into August because it doesn't. Is, are we coming up on a year from when we? Right. Yeah. Um, so he's asking for an extension to August of 2023. Uh, we've done these in the past. I mean, we did them for uh, that the, the solar. Like one is the last one I remember. It's just if they're done this way through with a letter request. I mean, does anyone have any issues with that? No. No. Okay. No. So um, it's within the time limits. Okay. So we will. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if we have to do a motion and vote on that, but we. Probably should have just in case. Yeah, okay. I'll make a motion to grant the time extension for most Holy Redeemer um, variants. Uh, six months to August, Linda, you said it was? Yes, I think it's August 27th, but it, end of August is probably fine. Okay. <clears throat> a second on that, Linda? Yes, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we'll let them know on that. Um, <clears throat> We, I just had a note in here about the upcoming Friendly 40B. So I spoke with uh, town council on that and just, uh, you know, without talking about the specific case, um, just to bring you guys up to speed on kind of what the process is going to be for that. So that is, um, that's going to be coming before us. So they have not submitted a formal application, but the selectmen have issued a, um, a letter of interest or something to that effect, which, you know, lets, lets them know that that leadership in town is supportive of the project, um, or of the project being heard, I guess. And so that so they will become they will be filing a um, an application with us. What we are above the ten percent. So what happens is we will notify them that we're above the ten percent, and we will open the hearing with um, the ability to deny the motion if we want to. Um, and so then we will bring in, we will be, we'll, we will be working with town council and with a consultant um, to like 
work through the things because we're going to be handling like the stuff that the planning board would typically be handling in terms of like parking and drainage and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We we refer it out to the other boards and the other boards give us feedback, um, and we have up to six months to conduct the hearing. Um, but so that will be going before us. I mean, if we if we vote, well, I guess we don't we don't have to vote to accept it anyway because the you're. You can open the hearing as long as you give them a notification about the 10%. You can open the hearing with the opportunity to um, deny it later on. So I think that's, I mean, I don't see why we're going to do that. Um, but that is sort of the process on that. I just wanted to let you guys know mm -hmm. that that's going to be coming. It's going to be like a more intensive thing than what we normally do. Mm -hmm. All along the process, things could come up that. Yeah. So they have submitted some type of plan which we should get from the, uh, they've, submitted, they've submitted a plan to the select board. So uh, we should get that plan of like what's been submitted to the select board, but then they will also be like, presenting it to us. Um, the town council has, uh, is, has, is gonna speak with the town administrator about uh, doing a, um, a training for us on the 40B hearings in general. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So with the she had to get approval for that from uh, you know the from the town administrator, but uh, so that's a possibility that we would do that too. But you know we just would notice that on, on this uh, town clerk calendar and be able to do that. Um, but yeah, so there's no action right now, but that's something that's coming, and that's like sort of the general process that she outlined for me when I talked with, with I talked with the town council last uh, last week. So there's that one, and then Linda had a couple items that she wanted to discuss here. Basically, I'd like to update the, um, the ZBA info on the town website. And that's not adding a lot of stuff, but it is updating the board member names and associate member names, adding those, and contact information. And um, I'm I guessing that Dee Dee is our contact, but I wasn't sure it was Jennifer. Dee's the contact. Um, I don't think we should put contact information in there for not for us. For us, yeah. Just make sure that Dee's listed on there. Okay. Um, and then in that case, just to make sure that people aren't getting, you know, multiple. Um, well, one, we don't want to violate open meeting law by all being on the same email with somebody who's talking to us. Mm -hmm. But also, um, I think just to make sure we're giving a consistent message to people that are applying. It's, better to have it come through the building department. Mm -hmm. They can sort of triage it too. Sometimes there's things that someone might think need to come to the CBA that Tally's is able to handle on its own. So I, I think Dee is the right contact person to have there and that Dee can get it to us as, as needed. The other um, thing to put there is to publish the hearing location. The time, I mean, <clears throat> the time and uh, the hearing notice goes on the web, but there's no location listed. Is that something we can do consistently? Um, where we are. Yeah. I mean, I think we could decide as a board that like, we want to try to shoot for this room. The, the only problem is like, sometimes this room's not going to be available. I don't know if that creates confusion if we list that this is our like meeting room and then we have to go to the senior center or something like that. But yeah, because they, they have like the library and that's what my son would do do stuff in here. Yeah. Um, like have the park um, as well. We maybe, could, we maybe could at least put, you know, the three locate I mean I guess our hearings are going to be either here or at the senior center at this point or on zoom so I guess we could we could put multiple locations for when we have our hearings at these three locations I think that's or or meeting at and I mean if it's not accessible then do zoom yeah as well just to keep it consistent could let people know that we meet at the library or at the senior center or on zoom if like you know I don't know we when we post the notices, does it say where the meeting will take place? Yeah, yeah, you have to say where the meeting will take place. Um, That's what's missing. Right. So There's she's just saying on the website, would yeah. be helpful to say, like, do other boards say that where they meet? Do they all meet in the same place consistently? Yeah. Like I think the planning board does, or did anyway, if they used to it. Yeah. Just old school. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we could put something out there about, yeah, I think we could do that if we want to. I mean, is the town hall not available anymore? The meeting room that we used to do our meeting It's a junk room. Sorry? <laughs> it's a junk room. Oh, it's a junk room? This. This has kind of storage stuff in there. Yeah. Well, when you put up the. Um, I guess if we just say library. I mean, I just like don't know if it's going to be confusing people, for instance, like 
if we say we meet at the library and then we want to do it at the senior center, mm -hmm. like, is that going to be confusing to someone potentially who's like, oh, I got a meeting at the ZBA tonight, would, we, would people maybe end up at the wrong place? But when you post yeah. the hearing time, and you have to post the <coughs> Jennifer, Jennifer does that, doesn't she? She posts the, the hearing. The town clerk. Town clerk. So the town clerk could know at that point in time where we're going to be. The town, well, so the, the notice that we put out, the notice that goes out to a voter is the notice that goes to the paper, and the notice that goes to the town clerk has the, has the address of where we're meeting. Okay. Um, so it's a question of. But it's just whether we want to know like, where, like, where we usually meet. Like the library's closed as well right now. Like we're in there kind of. Like this door is open, but that end door isn't open. That could be confusing as well for people. But I, but I, but I think it'd be okay to say that we meet at the, the you know, the library or the. If we meet at the senior center on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're open until seven. We could meet a little bit earlier and be within the um, open period. Mm -hmm. And not have any problems people would just be able to come in now. Right, and then even if we walked in and left. Yeah. Which is what all the other boards do. The right. Board. And especially, like you said, if we're going to have more um, higher profile stuff coming up, like more people will be yeah. in attendance, so it's important that we... If someone recommended this room to me versus the senior, the senior center, they said they like this room better. This is a lovely room, but like again, is it is it available? Yeah, all yeah. the time. We could probably book a senior center room, please. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not like they, you know, there's anything much going on there in the way at the senior center. They have a classroom that's open. There's the big, the big uh, dining area. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of other rooms. There's that's where the Concom meets in there, right? In the, uh, the yeah, dining area? Yeah. Concom meets in the dining area. I convinced them to meet in the classroom. Because mm -hmm. it's a smaller, better, better sounding room. Is the planning board still on Zoom? Okay. No. So, if they were meeting, they were meeting in town hall. Oh, maybe they're not they're not meeting in person. No. They're not meeting nope. But they're still listed as meeting in town hall on the web. So. But the select board, I think, is still on Zoom. Nope. No? They're, they're hybrid. So they meet in the senior center in that social hall, mm -hmm. and they do hybrid on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I'm going to want them to set this up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They do the. Um, so I, guess, right, well, I think we can think about that one. Yeah, um, I, think, I think the first step would be just see like how booked up this room is and whether it would be an inconvenience to say that we need it on that Monday and see our park is in there. I just think we should, at some point, do it. Yes. Make sure the location is on the website with the hearing date. Well, that's on. That's on. That is. That is not on. Right. Yeah. That's why it just means adding the location to it. Yeah. Okay. But even like I went to the ZBA website today just to see, and there was nothing listed on the schedule for today on the calendar. No, they don't. I know. They don't do that at all. They, it just goes on the town yeah. clerks. I found it listed, but it's in the meetings menu. Who's the webmaster? The webmaster? Yeah. There's. Like who, who runs the website? Jennifer, isn't it? Jennifer is the main person for the website, but I believe other people have access to the website. Like I have, I have access to have the media part of right. our web page, but someone might have access to the town clerk part of it. But I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, whoever is watching this, Jennifer is the contact for it. I did see this meeting listed on the website. On top of yeah. Yeah. No. I went to the CBA website. There's a calendar and there's Oh, yeah. No, it's not there. We need to put it there. I don't know how we do that. I don't know how we do that. Through Jennifer. Uh, I mean, I can talk with Jennifer. Yeah. How we do that? Okay. Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. Because maybe, I don't know, if we could get access to it or I don't know. Once, once you figure out location, I'll figure out how to get it there. How's that? Okay. Um, I have one other thing. Um, we have a website on the CBA page mm -hmm. allows us to put some explanation at the top and most of the other boards do. The planning board doesn't but all the other boards have some information about the, what the board does and how it operates. And I was thinking we could put some wording there and I threw out some suggestions that might help people and maybe not but it's not something we have to decide tonight. We can do one or two or not any. But uh, it's an opportunity to put something there so people know what the ZBA does and doesn't do. And I was, one I think we've talked about a lot here is item four. The ZBA adheres to NAS state conflict of interest regulations and does not conduct discussions in cases outside of actual hearings. So people don't, you know, 
ask us to do findings before we meet. <laughs> that was one. Um, incomplete or inaccurate applications based on phone or injection. That was another. Those two have also hearings are scheduled two weeks after public postings. If any of these you think would be helpful there, or none, what, you know, I propose yeah, that you think about it. There, yeah. Maybe get back to me with some ideas. Yeah. Yeah, or yeah, something else that I didn't list. I mean, I would even say just a small bulleted perhaps glossary of terms, just so people understand the difference between the variance and the finding. Well, that's good, yeah. Um, and then uh, we should check with Dee Dee on the, um, I, I don't have a current list, like a paper list of the uh, all the staff of the, the bylaw. Well, I think we're supposed to have one, but. What was that? The paper, the paper bylaw, I don't, I don't have one. I don't either. I have had to print out sections, and it's really annoying to try to have to print the page. Yeah, I made this for you, Andrew. Did you make that yourself? It should be in a binder. Yeah, so the, the but binder. these are actually the old ones. These are, these are the old, the, the number has changed. Yeah, everything, there's, and there's a lot of additions. But somebody made this, I mean, I put it in the binder. Someone gave me these papers when, I, when they joined the board. But, right. Mm -hmm. John, um, John handed out a partial, and then I updated it later. But what happens is that you get all these new, the new updated bylaws that the town votes on, mm -hmm. and their insertions without right. their page numbers. And it's really hard to, it'd be nice to have a binder, just like Andrew's, with the yeah, binders. you could put in the, you know, the modifications or what have you. Yeah. And it's really hard to to have a, I mean, to sit at a meeting and go, buy, you know, online, mm -hmm. have your computer online and try to go back and look at each one on. Do you, uh, do you want to take that one and ask uh, D.E. or the clerk? I'll ask the clerk. For print copy. I think it just makes the things a lot easier when we're sitting here, because we all have three computers mm -hmm. trying to look up the bios. And then they do give us, like, like I got the updates in, in the mailbox, but I don't even have anything to add the update to. Right. Exactly. Oh, well, speaking of updates, do you want us to be checking for ourselves, or are you going to distribute that stuff? Yeah, I'll distribute that stuff. Okay. Not, we don't get much in there. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, okay. Occasionally we're copied on things, and then we get the applications. And site visits was my other thing. Yeah, I mean, we can do site visits anytime. I mean, I don't think that has to be up to me. If, if like, there, we have a hearing and people want to visit the site, I think we can just talk about it on that, that day. Okay. I think we should open the hearing. I mean, we have to open the hearing because you have to get permission from the person to visit the site. And so, we'll, so, we have to, so we'll have to open the hearing, and then you, you have to publicly say that you're going to the site because it's like a meeting to go there. Mm -hmm. You have to have all three of us are going to go at the same time. Which then you can conduct the meeting on site as well if yeah. you let people know. Yeah, we talk, I talked with like, the town administrator about this, and she was like, don't be bashful about like not making decisions that night mm -hmm. if you want to take more time on things. So I think we, that could just be up to anybody if people aren't familiar with if I mean, I feel like a lot of times we're familiar with like the area that right. we know, but um, if we want to go look at stuff, I, I think we can just decide that together. So, so we can go individually without any meeting, but if you decide that we should oh. go together, we can. Oh, yeah, so we can do that, but yeah, so even if one person says, I'd like to visit the site before we make a decision, I guess we can get permission at the meeting from that person, or just if you want to do a drive by. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could say, I want to, let's postpone this until we have a chance to drive by. Yeah, we can do that too. Okay. And obviously, you can drive by before. One person can drive by before the hearing. It's just like we don't have permission to go on the property if you want to, if somebody has a deck in their backyard or right. something. We don't, we don't have, uh, we don't have permission to go like, on the property until we meet with them. That would be, that could be helpful. Yeah, there's some of these uh, on occasion that would have been very helpful to be able to say, okay, we're just going to have to go look at the property and come back and so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that it for now? That's all I have. All right, we will uh, adjourn the hearing. As a move. Thank you. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye.